Oh God, that just feels wrong. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm here with Big Mike Custom Steel, and my name is Austin Hargett. Between the two of us, we have just shy of 30 years of welding experience. And today, we're at the OTC Offshore Training Conference at the Bowler booth, because we're gonna be running some really fancy wires, that Diamond Spark Dual Shield. They can put all that little good sprinkles and all the good stuff in it as far as the alloys to really kind of have any solution that you want as far as a filler metal. But today, to keep things simple, Big Mike here, you're gonna be running this 2F weld. Awesome. You're gonna teach us how to properly stack multi-bead passes. Definitely. Flux core is uh, really particular and we want to make sure that we have the right kind of leg size and all that. So that's what you're going to be showing us. And then we're going to be also doing a really common shipyard test which requires a back weld and then flip it around and then fill the groove. Before we can get started, We've got to prep our material as always. Did you bring a grinder? No, I thought you had the grinder. I don't I don't have a grinder. Damn it. Hey, you got a grinder? Uh, no, sir. I didn't bring my grinder, did I? Uh, let's make some rounds. Right. Hey, uh, you got an angle grinder? No, it's sub -art. Damn. Do you got an angle grinder? No. Damn. Yeah. You got a grinder? I need a grinder. Oh, uh, no. But we have f shirts. No, the grind? That's kind of nice. Thanks. All right, hey. I think we're... Hey, nice shirt, man. I guess he's Big Mike and I'm Little Mike today. Big Mike, let's go ahead and get started with your 2F weld. All right. I think since we don't have a grinder, I think it'd be a really cool experiment if we see how much slag we can actually run over for both of these tests. So we'll do your 2F, you'll stack it. We're gonna clean none of the slag off. All and right. then we're gonna do the same thing with this groove weld, but let's make sure that the machine has the appropriate settings first right. so that we can accomplish this, because this is a big no-no. Uh -huh. And again, the whole point of this is not to say that you should do this, we're just seeing if we can. We're going to be well with the Fronius Transsteel 4000. We're going to go ahead and adjust our volts here to at least 23. Yeah, this uh, machine is pretty smart. And I could pretty much just set my own volts and it just set my amps right there. All right, Big Mike, I'm going to get you started first. We're not going to clean anything, so I know against your better judgment, mm -hmm. don't take the slag off. Hit that uh, yellow button there. This is my favorite part. Ooh. <laughs> All right, Big Mike, fire her up. All right. Eyeballs, eyeballs. Right now I'm just doing the root pass, trying to make sure that all my uh, legs are blending properly, making sure I'm getting both sides of the plate, making sure I'm blending properly, but I'm not doing too much whipping compared to short circuit or regular MIG welding. And I'm also making sure that these legs are reaching on both sides, good and solid. And then just getting close to the end right there. I don't do it. Don't you do it. Don't mm -hmm. you touch those things. You're grounded. You don't get these. Dang it. Chippy. All right, Mike. So there's our root pass. Looks good. It looks like you got a nice root in there. All right. So all I want you to do now is run one fat one over there. One big fat one. And what's really important to kind of know, we just want to cover it, but we want those leg links even, right? Right. So you've got the single pass over top of that root pass. You ran everything over with slag. Yep, no, you took away my chipping hammer, so. You know, I know this slag will come off really easy, but that's not the point of our experiment. Of course. As long as you're running the right voltage and amperage, you should be able to get away with running over that. And it welded fine. So now we're gonna put a two bead pass right over top of that weld. No chippy, no chippy. All right, eyes. You really want to make sure you've got those even toe links. You're not too much on the bottom or too much on the top when you're stacking these fillet welds, right, Mike? Right. You always want to aim for that little, uh, the little crevice or the little meeting point between the uh, slag and the base plate. Because that's the way I've done it was when I came to doing multiple passes. I see here I'm trying, actually trying to keep my gun angle at a good 90 so that we're not really dragging or pulling. All right. Go ahead, put the next one right on top of it. Runner hot. I say if we're gonna do this experiment, we do it right, nothing can live in hell, so we weld everything hot. It almost uh, sounds close to similar to spray arc welding. Yeah, we're definitely running that spray transfer, and you can tell that plate is smoking. But we're gonna keep it that way, because I think that's our best bet for success when we cut the cross section out to see what's inside. And we're done. Oh, we got a nice freaking glow in there, Mike. It's glowing. We still got three more passes. We have done nothing as far as chip the slag off. Nope. So let's not stop, let's not let it cool off. 
and just keep going. I want to see if we can really do something with this. So okay, we'll keep going. just keep going, man. All right. Mike's on the final layer now. Again, we had one bead for the root, one bead right over top of the root, two beads over top of that, and then we're putting one, two, three for a total of eight welds in this fillet weld with no cleaning. Now I'd like to reiterate, you should not do this. This is not a common practice. This isn't one of those things that you're like, oh, well, since I can, I just won't. You should always clean, but if there's some slag left, if you're running the right amps and volts, you still can potentially be okay. Number two, coming in hot. How you feel about it so far? Is it welding any different? Actually quite impressive in my opinion. The, you know the slag is there, but it's burning over it like it's nothing. Like there's not even anything there. Last bead, last bead. All right, one more weld. Right on that top, and man, it is burning on that thing. And there we go. And look at that right there. She's running so hot, she's actually peeling on its own. Okay, well now it's the moment of truth that you said you want to get the slag off. Chip it. Chip and brush it. Where did I put your chippy? Whoa, look at that. Wow. Kind of impressed. Off in just one piece. You can't even see where any slag inclusion or nothing. You can't see anything on the top, but we are going to cut this open. We're going to look at the cross-sectional area. So we're going to take this one out of the way, let it cool off. We'll cut this up. Now we're going to move on to this back weld. We're gonna do the exact same thing, but we're gonna bin test that one. What do you think about that? That's gonna be awesome to see. All right, so again, this is a really common test that I've seen in a lot of shipyards. They've got a V-groove, single V-groove plate, and they go ahead and make a back weld. This isn't always in that order. Sometimes they do the back weld, then they flip it over, get in there, and grind to the root, and then do the rest. Today, we have no gouge, we have no grinder, so we're gonna go ahead and use our runoff tabs, run this back weld. We're just gonna flip it right the freak over, fill it up, cap it, flag weld the whole thing. And again, should you? No. But can we? We'll find out, because we're gonna bend this when we're done. Woo! That's grind mode. So I'm kinda worried about blowing through. I've got about a sixteenth of an inch gap, no land. I just wanna get that penetration. I've got a small keyhole at the front, that's looking good. We haven't changed any settings from that fillet weld to this groove weld. Got a big old keyhole at the front of it now. Use this runoff tab. I made it. Whew. Check it out, Big Mike. That was set right, I'd say. Oh my God! Wow! Flip it over. We can see that we've got a complete joint penetration all the way through. Saw that little bit of keyhole right at the front of it. And now we're, again, we're not cleaning anything. We're probably gonna only have room for like one pass and then a cap. Let's try it out. Hot pass. Doing a nice drag angle, keeping that puddle nice and hot on the back end. I'm working towards myself. I don't wanna carry too much of the metal in this like 30 degree bevel. It looks like we're getting all the way down to the bottom. Get up on that tab. Excellent. Nothing new, right? So we're going to not chip anything. Going to go right back into it. Going to fill this guy up flush. It looks like we can freaking cap it, honestly. Just a one bead cap. We'll see after we're done if we capped it or not, but regardless, I think we're gonna have all the evidence that we need as far as in that groove. This might need a cap just to cover up the ugly that I'm probably undercutting this bevel. It's peeling right off. And again, I, I don't wanna remove any of the slag. I still feel like I gotta cap it a little bit. We're gonna put a nice weave cap over it just so we make sure that we're past flush and all the reinforcement. But slag's coming off even now. No chipping, no nothing. I don't know what to do about this peeling slag that's in my way. I guess I'm just gonna run it right over. Ooh. Ooh. Oh 
oh god that just feels wrong i'm gonna put a pretty heavy cap on it because i just i honestly can't see my edges with this big slide peel right in the front of me just keep it slow keep it hot keep the, everything in the puddle starting to lay down that bit of slag in front of me this just feels wrong well, i'll be damned that last pass was peeling off and we just ran right through it and now we get the peel right stuff still comes off all the way to the top check that out that's a fat daddy right there we're gonna cut into these welds we're gonna test them and see if there's anything trapped in them all right big mike well what do you think of that i mean we got peelers left and right god dang i mean they're just everywhere that's impressive we've got our 2f weld we've got our 1g weld not a single wire wheel grinder chip and hammer brush not until the end yep so I'm skeptical. I'm interested to see on the on the finishing results. I mean, here. the Diamond Spark wire performed. It didn't seem like it welded any different. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna run out of here from OTC. We're gonna head to Precision, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one. We're gonna do a bin strap on this, and we're gonna go ahead and see the cross section on that one. All right, let me know if I pass. Take it easy, Mike. So we just got here to Precision Welding Academy in Katy, Texas, and we've got our coupons right here. We're gonna go ahead and take the fillet weld. On the bandsaw, we're gonna cut a couple pieces of it and look at the cross-sectional area, as well as cutting these straps out. We're gonna have a root, a face, and a nick break. So we're gonna see just how clean these straps are. So we take a look at this first cut. Mm. Looking down in there, there's something maybe in this root. We're gonna get a close picture of it. We're gonna cut this in a couple sections and cut those other straps before we get too crazy with the inspection. Not bad, not bad. All right, we got the fillet weld. It's all cut up in a couple sections. I feel like I see something down there in that root, but we'll take a closer look when we take a flat disc and kind of clean things up. We're gonna cut the bin straps out of this 3 8 plate now. I'm really excited to see the results here. I forgot what it's like to work in a shop. I'm sweating. We got all of our uh, cross sections of the fillet weld cut and we cleaned them up on this bench grinder over here to really see a little bit of better evidence. And then we also got the root and the face bins and we got our nick break ready to go. We got them all cleaned up. Now why I really hate seeing slag inclusions inside a weldment is because it's usually an operator error type issue. And as a CWI for six years and a welder for 15, it just shows a lack of effort. You know, you're trying to cut corners, you're trying to weld too fast, or you're not really taking the time. And the fact that we didn't put any effort into cleaning this slag is, from what I've seen already, is crazy. So let's take a closer look at these cross sections of this angle iron. So again, taking a look at these, they're not all perfect. And we try to clean them up as best we can, but you should see little brown specks of something in this weldment. I'm gonna try to get as close as I can for you guys. You can see right at the root, right at the root of it, there's a little speck of something. And I will say my man Mike, is, he needs to work on his leg links. But if we go through and look at all these, this is the end of the fillet weld. You still see that, that's a big something. It does look like something that would relate to slag in one way, shape or form. But the fact that we didn't clean any, there's a root, a hop pass, two welds and three welds on top of this and that's all we got which is pretty remarkable and that's only on one of these specimens this one looks spick and span i don't see anything in it and same thing we got a little bit of something maybe in the root but the biggest thing with this weld is those leg links so far but now we've got to do our nick break our face and our root bend we've got our face bend Got a root bin. We got a little corner track. We 
Before I show you the results of this bend, we're gonna do this nick break and bend it sideways. All you need is a bit of leverage. Okay. I got both pieces. That way we can see exactly how much slag is in them. All right, so let's take a look at these. This is our face bend here. This is a cap. You can see the one side of the cap, one side there, one side there. We have no issues, no corner cracking. I was honestly not very surprised. I thought that was gonna happen. Now, here at the root, we've got a whole new story. We're ripped right through the middle. You can see the edge of the root pass right here. The other toe of the root pass right here, as far as that back weld. This is ripped right through the center. I don't think that that had anything to do with the slag because of it being fractured right down the middle. I think it had to do with the fact that we didn't have the right prep when we did the back weld and then did that hot pass. So I left some lack of fusion at this point and then we filled everything up. This is where the failure, I believe, happened. And the only reason why I think that is because of our evidence of our nick break. The nick break tells us exactly how clean this is. This should look like a wafer cookie with all the slag that we trapped in here but we didn't trap any, it's clean metal, it's clean stuff right there. The cap bent fine, we got clean metal. The only thing that failed was that root. And if we did, if we had a grinder for this uh, back weld and then grinded a little to make sure we had clean metal and then did that first pass, I bet we would have had success on this root weld. But very interesting for that bowler diamond spark wire and how it performed. Now I know I've said it already, I wanna make it very clear, you should not weld over slag. You should always do your due diligence as a good welder. To prep your material, you should be cleaning the slag because it's not a whether and if you can, it's whether you should. Things can happen. This was a failure today. The weld test failed. However, I don't know if it was due to the slag. We should have had a lot more and that diamond spark wire did do its job to making a welder's job easier if that slag was to have been left on there. However, it shouldn't. Again, do not do this, but it is a really cool experiment. I appreciate you guys all for watching and we'll see you on the next weld. Welcome back, bro, somebody's got to change.